Hi, I've built a Tesla coil that is driven like the way Nikola Tesla did, using an impulsed primary. And this is very efficient for generating very high voltages and sparks. A relatively low frequency is used to drive the primary, which excites the much higher frequency secondary coil. I'll show you the experimental setup and explain how it is done and, of course, I will show you the sparks. First, let me show you the circuit. It is based on the same circuit that I have experimented with for several years on this channel. And I realized I never actually built a Tesla coil in the traditional way, with a spark coming out of the secondary. So I built one using my impulse circuit. Here is the schematic. The L1 impulse coil is charged up with a magnetic field. The series MOSFET switch is then opened up quickly, which makes the L1 impulse coil resonant. And the first resonant half wave is the impulse. The second half wave, due to its opposite polarity, is passed back through the body diodes of the MOSFETs into the grounded capacitor and stored for the next cycle. Thus the electric energy is recycled, making it very efficient. Parallel to the MOSFETs is the series resonant L2 coil, which is the primary, with its C2 tuning capacitor. This coil acts as the primary coil and receives the impulses from the L1 coil. The L2 primary coil is tuned slightly above resonance, which makes it behave more like a capacitor plate. This makes it possible to make proper impulses. The resonant frequency of the secondary L3 coil is equal to the resonant frequency of the L1 impulse coil. So the impulse equals the secondary. And since the L1 impulse coil is a biphilic coil, it is much smaller. It has only eight windings, while the L3 secondary is unifiler and has many more windings. And still they're equal. And to match these coils, I needed to tune L1 by creating just enough windings to make it slightly faster than the L3 secondary coil. I have a lot more videos using this circuit on my channel, so check them out. You can learn a lot from them. Note that I did not ground the secondary L3 coil. It is using a half wave resonant mode, whereby both ends of the coil become resonant. And thus for this I place the primary in the middle of the secondary. In theory, the secondary can be grounded in the middle of the coil, but it is not needed. Usually, Tesla coils discharge into the air or into a grounded point. And this is because Tesla coils normally are quarter wave coils, whereby one end is grounded and it produces a discharge spark into the air on the other side, which is resonant. But you can also use half wave resonant coils. And these do not need to be grounded. Both ends of the coil then are resonant, but 180 degrees out of phase. So when one is positive, the other is negative and vice versa. This makes it possible to let the ends of the coils spark over to each other. By not having a ground, the fields around the coil are totally free to move around the coils. Think about that. Here you can see how I wound my Tesla coil secondary. It was pretty hard work. It was all by hand. It's 0.4 millimeters wire and I used a lot of windings. It's on a PVC tube and I put tape over the whole coil so it wouldn't spark over to the primary and the impulse coil. Let's now continue to the experiment. So this is my setup for the Tesla coil, which is a half wave Tesla coil. The length of the coil is 16 centimeters and the diameter of the coil is eight centimeters. So it's a ratio of one to two. And I used a tungsten rod for the spar gap. I made it very pointy. I've got a little cardboard over here with lines on them 
and these are one centimeter lines so we can see the distance of the spar gap. Here is a high voltage probe with a piece of copper tape attached to it and this makes it a capacitive probe which is not connected to the system but it senses the changing dielectric fields and this doesn't change the tuning of the coil which is beneficial because the capacity of this secondary coil is very low and getting close to it or attaching a probe which uh, has capacitance will detune the system and I don't want that so I use this as a probe which works very nicely. Then here my power supply comes in it goes through the diode and here is my MOSFET switch. These are two MOSFETs which are simultaneously switched in series and this provides the possibility to get very high voltage impulses up to 3500 volts. Here is the series tuning capacitor for the primary coil which is here and this is a fairly large capacitor. It has 18 capacitors in parallel of 10 nanofarad making it a 180 nanofarad capacitor bank and they are all in parallel which makes the ESR very low and I chose a fairly large capacitor to be able to tune the rather small primary coil to a fairly low frequency. Attached to the capacitor bank is my high voltage probe which is connected between the capacitor and the primary so it can measure the impulse and the primary coil. This is the yellow trace on the oscilloscope and this is the orange trace on the oscilloscope. And then here we not only have the primary coil, the L2, but also the impulse coil. And the impulse coil is a little bit smaller. It is made smaller by me, so the impulse that it creates is equal to the resonant frequency of the secondary. Now both the primary and the impulse coil are bifilar Tesla coils. I've tuned this by simply measuring the impulse and the resonant frequency of the secondary and removing windings from the impulse coil until it was fast enough to match the secondary. I attached a paper straw to my tungsten rod and this way I can uh, manipulate the distance and uh, make it clear how far the spark grip is uh, sparking. And to be clear, the secondary coil is not grounded. It is a half wave resonant coil, which means that both endings are resonant and they are in opposite polarity. So when one is positive maximum voltage, then the other is negative maximum voltage. It is a unifiler coil and this uh, means that the capacity is fairly low of the coil. This raises up the frequency of the resonance. The capacity in relationship to the inductance is very small. So we've got a magnetic field alternating with the dielectric field and the dielectric field will be a very large voltage resulting in nice sparks. Now that's the setup. Okay now we're gonna turn the system on and take a look at the oscilloscope and see how it is tuned. So in orange we have the probe which is now floating so it's a little bit wobbly. I'll provide some power into the system and we can see the impulse. I've got 500 volts per division on the yellow trace and I already have a spark. Let's keep it at 2000 volts impulse and play a little bit. So you can see there is a nice spark here. It's not that wide yet. It's about, uh, I would say, a little bit more than two centimeters wide. I can get very close and then the purple spark will become more white. Very interesting to see. 
this also gives a stable oscilloscope shot which i will lock in right now so we can do some measurements i'll turn the system off first we'll zoom in to the impulse in yellow and measure it uh, it's already set that's nice We've got a delta T of 272.4 nanoseconds, which gives us a resonant frequency of 3.6 megacycles, but this is only a half wave, so the full wave would be half of that frequency, around 1.8 megacycles per second. And let's take a look at the secondary in orange. I'll scale it up in amplitude. And we'll zoom in to a nice wave. The full wave. Adjust the cursors to the maximums. And here delta T is 548.8, giving a resonant frequency of the secondary of 1.8 megacycles per second. So this means the impulse is nicely matched to the secondary which gives the highest efficiency you can also make the impulse faster than this so faster than a half wave of the secondary but not slower when you make it slower then the displacement is retarding the the resonance and it won't work like that it's just not efficient let's zoom out again what you can see here is that each impulse in yellow brings energy to the secondary which then starts ringing and this ringing slowly dies off and it's dying down due to the quality factor meaning it has some resistance which turns the resonant energy into heat and that heat is lost and so it dies off what you can also see right now is that the tuning is fairly nice when I tune into the impulse. Perfectly tuned would mean that the impulse hits the secondary just at the right spot so that it gives maximum amplitude. And I tune this by changing my signal generator frequency. I can try to do that right now but I'll need a stable spar gap. So let's turn the system on again there it is okay let's zoom into that and I'll, I'll change the frequency up and down a little bit you can see that when I give it the right setting it gives the maximum amplitude which is around here so I get the maximum amplitude when the impulse hits the system around this frequency. And that is 70.1 kilocycles per second right now. So that means I can also push up the power up to six divisions vertically on the yellow so that I won't exceed the 3000 volt limit I set myself to right now. I'm at 14.4 uh, times 2 volts input on the supply with a setting of around 1 amps and I'm going to push it up to get a 3000 volt impulse which is a little bit more powerful. I've got 2 times 19.8 volts on the supply with around 1.58 amps you can see the spark is a little bit more excited. I'm gonna extend. This is around three centimeters, three and a half. And yeah, here it stops. So around three and a half centimeters of spark. Very nice. So here's that spark. I'm gonna close in. As you can see, now it becomes white and silent. And there's a little bit of white gaseous streaming along the spark. If you, I don't know if you can see that on camera. 
we'll try to capture that. It's very hot, this one. I'll uh, make it a little bit bigger again. Yeah, now I'm reaching the border. Voltage is very high. Oh, ah! And I got shocked. <laughs> that was not so nice. Okay, turn the system off. I got a little fire. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay, let's uh, show that. I have burned myself. Pretty nasty burn. And it was by getting too close to the tungsten rod. So yeah, my tungsten rod sticks to here. It's just as long as that one. And it jumped through here onto my finger. I'm a little bit burned. It's it's not that bad. It's a radio burn and yeah. And this uh, caught fire. Well, okay, that's part of experimenting. You have to be careful. So I didn't feel the, the electricity shock. The only thing I felt was the heat. And yeah, clearly my, my skin is being burned. So I'm gonna stop this video now and take care of my finger, cool it down with some water. A fluorescent tube that lights up. I'll turn the system on. And if I come close, it brightly lights up. I can even use the spark. And then it is becoming a lot brighter. Very nice to see. This is of course due to the changing dielectric field. I also tried to make a solenoid primary and impulse coil on top of the secondary, but this doesn't work. The impulse then does not appear as a single impulse anymore because the impedance is much too high. The coupling was too tight. Maybe it would have worked if I had some distance between the primary and the secondary coil. Conclusion. Be careful when experimenting. Luckily, this was a setup without using high voltage DC, which would be less funny. I had that shock once, it's bad. You can use impulses to excite a secondary. Since the resonant energy of the impulse is recycled and used again, it makes this a very efficient method for creating high voltages. All the information in all of my videos is open sourced. This means no patents can or will be applied. Anyone can use this information for free. And I think that is the way to go because the earth needs a change. If you want to fund my research, you can do so by leaving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below with a tiny URL link. And that's it for now. Thank you for watching and see you later.